two games. I mean, two matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely going to be lots of Druid. Um, we see Dog with the uh, with the Warrior opening up. We don't see a lot of Warrior because our opponent, there, everyone's opponents was in banning Warrior in this tournament, and we see Warrior against Handlock. Now, what do you think about Warrior against Handlock? A lot of people um, have thought that it, this matchup favored Handlock a lot before GVG, but what do you think about it post GVG? It's a swing. I mean, it can go either way. Um, it also depends. On the warrior build, there are so many little tweaks that can be done. Some players don't even play big game hunter, and the big game hunter can uh, can mean a one. Uh, I mean, I mean a win or a lose for the warrior here. So it really depends on the build of the warrior, and also of course of the draw. Like one of the most crucial cards are shield blocks and shield slams, in my opinion, in this uh, matchup. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, actually, um, the most important cards are the Shield Block, Shield Slams, as well as the Acolyte of Pain. A lot of the times, you draw these Shield Block, Shield Slams, and Executes, um, and you can kill off your opponent's big threats, but eventually the uh, the Warlock Hero power is just gonna just gonna yeah. like take you out by just drawing way too many cards. It's gonna outvalue you, and the, the Acolyte allows you to kind of um, get parity on those draws, keep up with the Warrior in that respect, for every threat that he draws, you're going to draw a response. And for every um, response that your opponent draws, you're going to draw a threat. And hopefully by the time it gets to uh, Jaraxxus, you're going to be able to Harrison Jones him, which is the card we also see in Dog's hand. Yeah, and also he has a become Hunter. So first, Giant will be killed instantly. And wow, this is a great draw. Taskmaster for Acolyte of Pain means that you will get at least two cards from that one Acolyte of Pain. Which, as you said, is crucial in this matchup, and that's also why I rank uh, Shield Block, Shield Slam higher than Execute alone, just because Shield Block is is a cycle, is a country for your deck, so you can still be in game afterwards clear, uh, after you clear that one creature with the Shield Slam. Yeah. Now, Dog decides to armor up instead of using his Cruel Taskmaster on the Acolyte of Pain. Um, I think that there's two reasons for that. One is that he wants to save the Cruel Taskmaster for the Execute. That's the more obvious reason. But mm -hmm. the other reason is that he just doesn't want to get his, his opponent to, uh, to... He doesn't want to get too vulnerable to Hellfire, which is a card which is not valuable in this matchup for the warrior for the Warlock's perspective, usually, because Warrior doesn't really usually have a lot of weak minions on the board. But in the, uh, this particular instance, if he had used the Cruel Taskmaster, it would have gotten a lot more value than usual in the matchup. But the problem is that Warlocks are playing only one Hellfire for a long time, and now you can't really draw any cards from your Acolyte of Pain. So I think that the Taskmaster should be, have been used. You can't really afford yourself to play around one one off card at the start of the game, in my opinion. It's it's better to risk it in the in, in the start, and then mm -hmm. maybe have a big drawback from not playing around it. Then just you know play around are really not so. Um, often scenario, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Yeah, we see Kalos traded an Owl for the Acolyte, which is, I think is a really good trade for the Warlock, because the, the Acolyte is just a more valuable minion. The card draws are just so valuable, whereas there's not many other targets for the Warlock to silence in the Warrior's deck. Pretty much it's just Sylvanas, and you have, as the Warlock player, you're going to have two Owls anyway. You just use one mm -hmm. on an Acolyte of Pain, one on a Sylvanas, and you're all, you're very happy about that. Yeah, that's true. And now he's he's not playing any other uh, AOE effects at all, so... Mm -hmm. Well, he he kind of will not overextend after this turn. If the Warrior, of course, will sweep the whole board, and does he have the means to? He has one shot of... two fl Shadow Flames in his hand, but he has no Ash... Is there Ash Water? No, there's no Ash Water. Yeah, there. so. There's yeah, a Sun saw... Fury Protector. We saw Dog clear the um, the uh, slime with the big game hunter instead of the sludge belcher because he'd rather play around ancient watcher um, shadow flame than moral quell simply because if you if your opponent moral quells a BGH you're not too sad but if your opponent clears your entire board with a shadow flame then you're gonna be very sad. That's true. I wonder. Now what do you do as in Carlos' position? Um... You want to clear the body, but you have a, not really. You don't have the means to do this, and well, 
you can kill the only two creatures. That's not, a, not enough for a board cure. Uh, it's really a tough turn. How many cards does he, does he have? It's 10 cards, right? 3, 6, 9. Yeah, 10 yeah, cards. I think it's 10. Can't, you can't tap. You can play a Belcher. Hmm. But after you play yeah, a Belcher. It's just a very awkward uh, position. Um, Karis, Kalis has a lot of situational cards in his hand. He has both the Bolton Giants. He has um, both the Shadow Flames. But he doesn't, doesn't have really strong plays. Um, he's at mm -hmm. full health. Yeah, so he's Belcher. not going to get a lot of value from Giants. Yeah, just a weak Belcher again. Yeah, now... Doc did draw the Shield Slam, which can easily trade. With the um, with the Belcher, you want to keep those executes for the upcoming bigger threats like Doctor Boom or a Giant. And now you have the armor, so you, you you have to put it in use. So of course you use the Shield Slam first. How do you, how much of damage you can deal now? You can deal so much damage that the, uh, the Handlock will not be able to afford playing two Molten Giants with a uh, with a Taunter. But he didn't opt to deal any points of damage. That's interesting. Why didn't he even deal like one with the armor smith? I think he's the he's reading that his opponent definitely has the uh, has two, at least one molten giant in his hand, and he mm -hmm. sees that he won't be able to finish his opponent off anytime soon. So he um, so he just wants to deal as least damage as possible. Now I was about to say that even though it looked pretty bad for Callus previously. Um, Dog didn't have a, an Acolyte of Pain, and he was really running low on cards. So if Kallus was able to swing the board once, he would be in a winning position. But unfortunately yeah. uh, for him, Dog did draw the, um, the Acolyte of Pain, so he's kind of uh, sort of back in the game. Yeah, for sure, and the Shield Maiden is also a big threat. It's a target for uh, Siphon Soul even, but the problem is Warrior is packed with big stuff that you want to keep the Siphon Souls for. Yeah, curiously, like the shield maidens have actually helped the matchup a lot because they're kind of the mid-range threats that you don't want to use a siphon soul on. But if you don't have a minion on the board, there's really no other way to clear it. Yeah, well, exactly. an anti-heal bot and a shadow flame. It's a creative use of the cards, but this is not something you usually say in Hearthstone. But unfortunately, uh, for uh, Carlos, his health is way too high for the mount for, for the molten giants. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was the same. Um, the same thing with um, Neria versus um, Dog, I suppose, right? He mm -hmm. he just swept the uh, Warlock off his feet with 30 points of damage, and he was uh, the Warlock was just kept with two. Uh, I mean, he, he kept two Molten Giants in his hand without any effect. Uh, so this is the same position that Kalos is in right now. My shield mm. for Argon. Not a really yeah. a great turn for Kallus. Kallus finally drew some threats, but his opponent has built up so many answers already. Yeah. This board is just cleared so easily. Even <laughs> look at the health points of the warrior. That's oh my, that's insane. How do you deal with <laughs> six? <laughs> I don't know. How can you deal with that kind of HP points when you're almost? Uh, Almost, all, you draw almost the whole deck. You will be going into fatigue first, and your opponent is twice health points above twice of the health points you got, and still has some cards in his hand. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah, um, I saw this comment on Reddit that I thought really represented the warrior versus hammock matchup, and that comment was. One of the players just keeps losing health, and one of the players just keeps gaining health, and you never know who's who's winning because of that. You can never tell who's winning. <laughs> really funny. No, he can even afford just so... base tank Dr. Boom. It changed nothing in the health points. It feels like a mosquito bite for the warrior. Uh, Dog is doing such a good job making every single turn awkward for Kallus. And he's showing like he's showing how to play this uh, warrior versus warlock matchup really well, but again um, we're seeing the same problem with Dog. He has so few cards in his hand right now, and if Kallus is able to clear his opponent's board, he'll be in a winning position once again. Now this boom bot, where does it go? Did he hit a minion? I didn't see. I don't. 
I, uh, I don't believe he hit a minion. I think he hit the face. Man. Uh, yeah, because the... Man. Yeah, because the uh, Shield Maiden has, still has two health. If yeah, he cleared that right. Shield Maiden, it would have been, like, it would have been pretty awesome. Alex <laughs> Strasser coming down, okay. Do you want to use it? I don't think so. Well, you can deal 9 points of damage, so Carlos will be at 4 HP. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, like, how often do you do you see a handlock on turn, uh, like, no. 12 with 28 health? Not so often. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Nine nine cards deck, um, nine cards left in Carla's deck, and Doc has still eleven, so he's mm -hmm. up for two. He can drag this game like lo really long and just go to fatigue. But I don't think he wants to do this. Mm -hmm. If you play the Alex Straza right now, the, then Carlos can play both Molten Giants just to the. Um, just to the board, but that doesn't achieve much because he has to deal with the Alexstrasza on board and he has the Cypher Soul, so if he plays the Cypher Soul, he is not able to play the Molten Dragon at all. Well, what he can do is uh, he can tap and then play both Molten Giants and then the Sun Fury Protector and that puts up kind of a shield against him. Mm -hmm. And from what I see... Yeah, I believe that's going to be the play because if he's just Siphon Souls... Um, he might be vulnerable to, um, no, he's, he still wouldn't be vulnerable to Grom, because he but would be at... Yeah, uh, there's a Dev Spite which activates the Grom. Yeah, but he would be at, uh, 16 HP? No, he would be at, uh, if he did that play, he would be at 18 HP. Yeah. Um, which wouldn't be enough, but, so he, he opts for this play instead, which I agree with. So... There's a Jaraxxus that will heal. Oh, he didn't use the Gromach right now. A really good call not to go for the Grom to deal almost lethal damage, but would be not enough to finish off the Jaraxxus afterwards. Yeah, you, you can't really use Grom uh, in this matchup to clear unless you're extremely desperate. Because if your opponent knows that he uh, your opponent if your opponent knows that the warrior doesn't have Grom then he could just not afford to not play around it at all. And he can go like make stupid moves such as going down to like nine HP or playing Jaraxxus like willy nilly mm. against such a board. Um, I, I think an interesting dynamic about this matchup is actually Jaraxxus versus Harrison Jones. Um, previously Harrison Jones wasn't so common um, in warrior decks, but now like pretty much every warrior deck runs Harrison Jones just because of how common warriors are, because of how common handlocks are. And, and because paladins. of how common and paladins, of course. Yep. Yeah. So the problem, I, the problem with Harrison Jones now is that if the Draxos hit, uh, hits the board, then Harrison Jones will draw so much cards that put put him into the fatigue really early on. But still, I think Warrior is so much ahead in this game, even with a board presence, that it will achieve nothing for the, for the Warlord. Yeah. Does Kalos have a taunt? Because mm. if he doesn't, he's dead. No, I don't doesn't. think there's a taunt in his hand. Uh, he's still not dead because he has no activator for, oh, for the bomb. Right. Yeah, I, I thought the uh, death spite was still at uh, one charge. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the second death spite. Yeah. Hellfire. Ooh, not that's, that's, at all. Actually, that's actually the second Hellfire in uh, Kalos' yeah. deck. So he, he, built his, um, he built his handlock against aggro decks. And I think that's a large part in, in because he respects the Zoo deck, which 6 has really popularized in the last few days, gaining number one legend on all three servers. Quite a feat. Hmm. Now, what you can this do is... is... Tricky. <laughs> what, how can you deal with this? You have to set up a taunt, but you don't have a taunt, so you have to do, uh, gain life. But... Mm -hmm. You have no way of so gaining so much health that it will be above uh, the range of Grom. Yeah, right? you can... Yeah, of course. I think at this point, he's thinking that he's in such a bad position that he can't afford to play around Grom right now. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna animations more will, Yeah, and animations will take a lot of time here. So will he be able to play everything he wants? But that it doesn't really matter because he will lose anyway this game. Oh wow. Mm. 
Yep. Okay, he's gonna Ooh. siphon soul, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Grom, with, even without the activator, will get the lead here. Yeah, that little bit of DM from Dog showing that, oh, I can kill you without using Grom's ability. Just a uh, war charger. Yeah. This guy is just... Yeah. Um, a... There's no innovate yet. Oh, wild growth. There's still one chance to draw it. I mean, two chances. Uh, to draw uh, one chance to draw in fate on turn one, change the next Ramas, and two chances to draw into Wild Grove on turn two. Uh, indeed. Now, Dog Mulligan's his entire, entire hand. He's looking for the weapons, and he gets God, pretty much he get, pretty much gets a dream hand. Both weapons to clear whatever minions his opponent um, opponent puts on the board, and an Acolyte of Pain in order to draw more minions. Now, the yep. only ways it could be better if. He had an armor smith turn two, or he had an execute to deal with any crazy uh, innervate plays. But, uh, but I would be pretty happy if I were dog. For sure. Yeah, this I believe. Is a, this yeah, is I, I believe like uh, the 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 matchup used to be heavily favored for druid against warrior pre GVG, but I believe like it's been a lot better um, after GVG just because of the shield maiden. The Shield Maiden in a single card, it allows you to regain a lot of health and it puts a, a minion on the board that can contest a lot of your opponent's minions. For sure. I agree, but Shade of Exhaust is one of the best cards you can play against Warrior. It will require mm -hmm. a lot of time to be effective, but it's so hard to remove it. Uh, mm -hmm. it Brawl is the only answer here and there is no Brawl in um, Dog's hand. Silencing yeah. the Acolyte of Pain is really important just to negate the draws for Warrior, which can be crucial in this matchup, like in every single matchup. Warrior has to draw the cards. Yeah, I think uh, Kallus pretty much got the best draw possible um, for his hand without Innervate and without Wild Growth. He curves out really well with the Shade, with the Keeper in response to his opponent's uh, Acolyte, and with the, um, with the eventual Spectral Knight, which is another card that Druid really wants against Warrior, one of the best cards against Warrior for the Druid player. Now, Kallus is taking some time to think. Um, I believe that's because he wants to kind of bluff to his opponent that he has Innervate. Yeah, that's, that might be the case here. Oh no, he's uh, he's thinking about trading right now, actually. And that was it was interesting to, to let him... ...cards that you want to, to have uh, with a Druid. It, it helps a lot to set up the lethal with the combo. So, there's many cards that the Druid can choose from, so this game is far from an end. Yeah, the Shield Main is kind, of, uh, kind of weird for Kalos to deal with. There's not many <laughs> cards that, that Druid has that deal 5 damage. He'll either have to... He'll probably have to swipe and hero power if he decides to clear. Yeah, it's fine, fine, but... It, it also doesn't develop the board, which is pretty much what the Druid wants. But this, he's still ahead of, uh, on the board, and Warrior be, will be kind of pushed to use the Death Sprite on a Keeper, which he doesn't really like. Mm -hmm. That's a really well, bad, uh, bad option. I feel like it's going to be the, the same position again, because Dog has double Shield Maiden, and then just the second Shield Maiden is going to pop down next turn. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't believe Dog sure. is any better place. Well, you can always... No, that's not going to uh, no, he has to play the shield one. And next turn will be Dr. Boom, and not trade. But we know that there's a double shield block, which will help clearing the Dr. Boom, which is super important in this situation. Still, the bombs will be crucial. Uh, I mean, the outcome of the bombs will be crucial unless he will use the Shield Maiden to clear the Spectral Knight, which can be the case here. Because mm. there, Do then this, yeah, the bombs are not important at all when the Shield, uh, Shield Maiden will at one help. Y yes, Monk? Yeah, Dog's trying to decide how to clear this, uh, this Dr. Boom. He's deciding, to, he, he was like hovering over the Cruel Taskmaster, which led me to believe he wanted to put a Cruel Taskmaster on the board instead of just armoring and shield slamming for 8. But I think this was the better move. The Cruel of Taskmaster can get a lot more value later on in the game. Um, whereas the Cruel of Taskmaster also doesn't uh, get one more mana. 
Oh wow, now this will pose a problem. You will have to Well, it's, it's actually perfect. Them. No, it's actually perfect because uh, he saved the Cruel Taskmaster, which is exactly what he needs. He's just going to shield block. Um, if he doesn't get an execute, he's going to armor, shield, slam, and Cruel Taskmaster. Oh yeah, you're right. So an excellent decision from Dog to save the Cruel Taskmaster and armor last turn instead of using the Cruel Taskmaster. Awesome. Hmm. Drawer, it's still not over. There's a Ancient of Roar and second Spectral Tiger, uh, Spectral Knight, sorry. Yeah, it's not over by far. We see Druid has like just so many minions in his hand, so he can play like really good minions every single turn. And in addition, he has the Ancient of Roar. Um, I was talking to Kit Kats before, of course, the a, a, a Warrior Master, and he was saying mm -hmm. that previous GVG at least, um, Warrior like struggled so much against Druid just simply because the Ancient there's nothing that Druid or nothing that Warrior had that could really contest the Ancient of War. It just it just does so much damage, or it, it puts a minion on the field and draws two cards um, without any additional activators. And that's not something Warrior can contest with easily. Their card draws are basically shield, shield block, which doesn't really affect the board, and also Acolyte of Pain, which is kind of an if each card draw at best. Yeah, you're right. Shield Maiden changed a lot of the matchups for Warrior and it also improved the synergy with the Shield Slam, which is really important. Mm -hmm. That's one of the crucial cards to gain tempo of Warrior. So it felt like a major improvement for every single control Warrior. And I, I was kind of uh, kind of surprised that in the first days of GVG, not every single Warrior control, uh, warrior control was running two of them. Like some players mm -hmm. just run one. I felt like this is the card you wanted to get from GVG for the Warrior. That's like really lacking at this. Um, at that that point of the curve of the mana curve was really lacking that kind of that kind of minion. Still, uh, wow, this... this is a bad bad spot to be in. Yeah. How do you deal with that? You have to play the Belcher, I think. Hmm. But you want to also well, play I... the Sylvanas. Uh, I don't think you can, at this point, I'm not sure you can afford to play around combo anymore. We, we know can, that can uh, Kallus has combo in the hands. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Gromish might be a play. It clears the most things off the board. Um, but you're still going to die to combo just because you're going to leave a Yeti on the field. And um, and you just take too much damage from hitting the, the Druid of the Claw. Yeah. Well, he's going to go for the Belcher play. I, I believe so. the Belcher, Belcher. I believe Belcher and Harrison also dies the combo. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that's also lethal. And, well, there's no way to avoid lethal, right? Um, you mean if he hits the uh, Yeti with with an axe? Yeah, I actually and don't believe that. If it's 14 points of health, then you clear. No, wait, that's two off from lethal, I think, right? Another mistake, and then. Loader will clear That's, the uh, Belcher, then the hero power have to... Oh, well, uh, never mind. It's, 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 yeah. it's still lethal. It's definitely still lethal. Um, even if he cleared the Yeti, I believe it still would have been lethal. Just because he would have taken too much face damage from the Yeti. Yeah. Okay. And, so, uh, Ju how does Druid... this match? Yeah, Druid does its job. Um, and he, uh... He's able to beat the warrior. Yeah. I... Hit the face, Rav could mm -hmm. hit face. So it was really a face damage deck. And it was banned a lot during the alpha. Uh, but now we'll be starting the game with Rogue versus Druid. And Dog hopes to take the match and then increases to increase his chances with the match uh, matchups later on with his freeze mage, which can struggle against the Druid, as you said, especially when the Druid is playing a low tap. So nice. Well, we see uh, a key Innervate in Kallus' hand right now. He has Innervate and he has Coin. And also, he has a Yeti. Yep. And uh, it's probably one of the best plays you can make in this matchup. And also, he has a low tap. Another one of the most important cards against Miracle Rogue, which Dog is playing. My stream of truth is stopped. Can't see anything, to be honest. 
-hmm. Now it started, but it's really um, FPS issues. God damn it. Yeah, um, we see Sabotage in, in Dog's deck. It's one of the more interesting cards. Are you solving problems, Lothar? Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, using the other uh, the other link. Okay, um, but I will be sometime, you know, after you. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think... I think Kallus was deciding whether to innervate out the Yeti on turn one. And I believe he decided against it because if he did, his curve would have been horrible. He, uh, and he would have been really vulnerable to a sap, which uh, Dog has in his hand. Okay, I think there's a bug. It has to be rematched. Yeah, I think the spectator mode was bugged. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to uh, go back into the game at a later time. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It was bugged. So now we'll just get back into the spectator mode. That's right. I forgot we were using the spectator mode. So when someone actually quit, uh, quits the game, it doesn't mean the game ends. It's just the spectator quitting the game and rejoining. You know, you know Lothar, uh, but this game that we're playing is the basis of on the basis of technology, and if technology fails, then we have nothing to go on, right? But as you can see, yep. going back into this game, um, it's oh, it's already, already turned six. six. Wow, that, well, we skipped a lot. We have to, you know, catch up. What happened? It's Sylvanas, it's Tavanos, it's Dr. Boom, it's Ragnaros, there's everything here, and Ancient of Law, and the Savage Roar of Lothar, okay. So, mm -hmm. turn seven for dog. He played the. Oh, there's always there's also a sap which was crucial in this turn to just to mitigate the effect of Sylvanas. So it actually worked like a time walk for dog here just to steal a turn from Carlos. Yeah, um, dog is like, well, you you have innervates. Well, I have preparations and. That's even yeah. better because it's it it, uh, it goes through three mana instead of two. Um, Dog is kind of running out of cards to play right now, but fortunately he has a Ragnaros on turn uh, on turn eight, so he won't be even really sad if a BGH comes out from Callus's hand right now. Unfortunately for Callus, he doesn't have a BGH, and uh, he doesn't have an easy way to clear this Doctor Boom. For sure, oh, you can't really deal with it. You have no option. Shade is probably your best bet, but as we can see, uh, Ragnaros, or sometimes called as Senor del Fuego, comes on the board, and Dog is going to be is going to be rubbing the shade probably and hoping that the shade, um, the Ragnaros goes to to the shade. But unfortunately, no, it goes to face, and that's actually not an outcome that you're too sad about. Yeah, Drew is very low, six, uh, ten points of HP. What well, this can mean. How can you deal with this board right now? Sylvanas is kind of threatening, uh, threatening your Ragnaros, but a sap would ruin the whole, whole idea. Second sap, I mean. Yeah, sap pretty much wins the game. Nope. Unfortunately, no, no sap, sap, but I think right now you just hit uh, the Druid's face, go for the 50-50, yeah, and course. if the Ragnaros hits Sylvanas, then hope that he takes the uh, Azure Drake. Yeah. That, that's pretty much the best you can do right now. Yeah, this is, oh, well, uh, this is this is some chain of events that had to happen. This is one okay. is hit and it hit. Oh, the Azure Drake. So all right, Dallas so is not happy about this at all. For the viewers, I think that was the best outcome simply because the game goes on. But we can see uh, an opposing Ragnaros from Kallus. It's gonna be another Rag versus Rag battle. Yeah. So now the Rag has see to what hit the Rag and it hits the Rag. Oh no! It hits Dog's Rag. And Dog is in a horrible position right now. Dog has to play Auctioneer just to draw into answers. He needs Sap. It's a crab, that's good. He can cycle the deck wall. And the kill, but that's... Oh, that's bad. That's, he has to play Blade Fury. Hard. Yeah, uh, oh, that's even worse. How do you deal with the Ragnaros now? You, you, you have the option. So now he can hopefully he just has to hope into drawing something that can kill his opponent because I don't see him removing this rag anytime soon. Do you you can deal three points of damage to the face, which is not of course enough to threaten lethal this turn. So 
Carlos has to find another way, maybe heal yourself this turn, and... Well, it sucks. It has yeah, to it does, but... You can't even clear this uh, Auctioneer, which is really usually very dangerous. And if he doesn't hit the Auctioneer... Okay, he hit the Auctioneer. This would be awful, because one spell drawn... Oh, there's actually a ship. Would that mean then maybe Dog would have pulled off a little here with just like a lucky draw, but that's not the case. Uh, um, he fills up the board with two creatures that can, well, take the hits from Ragnaros and also will keep damage going low. Oh, but there's a combo, which means 22 points of damage to the face, which is not enough to hurt a little. Uh, 21 you know, points, if sorry. E uh, even if he doesn't do, even if he doesn't have lethal, he can just play the low feb and pretty much lock dog out of the game. Can he clear the board and still further lethal? He has to sacrifice both, uh, both friends to kill the drake and the heal board. So that will be 13 points of damage, and that's not enough. He will be put at 10, so he will be at two afterwards. So he just goes. No, I think. With yeah, he goes the, uh, the safer route and just set up lethal for next turn. Yeah, this is probably the best play. Um, his dog will be able to play one shiv this turn, and that's definitely not going to be enough. His yeah. alternative is to play both creatures, and that's definitely also that not going to be enough. I think dog, oh, dog uh, knows this game is lost. Ooh, yeah. a 4-4 four, four Edwin. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, this happens. It was really close uh, for Dog to actually pull off a win here, but that was not enough. And now he will have to play Freeze Mail into a draw to refresh it. Well, uh, spoiler alert, um, even if you can't see it, Callus has drawn the sacred uh, Wild Growth in his opening oh, hand. Oh, damn it, really? No. Okay, oh, I'm back. Oh. And... In fact, he's drawn two wild growths in his hand. Two wild growths? Um, do you coin out the first one? I don't think so, right? Yeah, uh, I don't think so either, but... I, I, the thing about wild growth is one is really good, but the second wild growth, a lot of the times, isn't what you want, because a, a lot of times if you have two <laughs> wild growths, your hand can get really clunky, and you don't have enough minions yeah, to play. But he just drew an innervate. This means he can play... Turn for that's a boom. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Oh, this is devastating. How do you deal with that? You can't. Yeah, not only does does he have innervate. Um, he has Doctor Boom. He has Spectral Knight. Well, everything's wow. going so well. I believe no. Wow. This is a turn three Doctor Boom. <laughs> How do you deal with that? I don't know, you have to sacrifice your Frostbolt and ping it, but this is... You just lose so much... So much resources. Well, Dog, uh... Dog is going like, oh, so this is what it feels like to face a turn <laughs> 3 or 4 Dr. Boom as Freeze Mage. He's, he's, wow. he's kind of getting a little taste of his own medicine right now. Yeah, that's true. How do you uh, feel about... Not only Dr. Boom... But Dr. Boom followed up by Spectral Knight. It this cannot get any worse for Dog now. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about using the Innervate to keep one bomb on the field? I mean, uh, you Spectral Knight, play the Spectral Knight, then Innervate Hero Power or Rev. But I think Hero Power should be uh, played there. Just to kill off the loot holder with your hero. You won't be using the Innervate, I think, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then you have a bomb yeah, on board, possibly. and if you draw into a seven draw, it means a lot of, you know, first damage from that one bomb. Big game hunter, not usable at all unless but turn nine. I, I just, Lothar, I just wanted to point out, last turn, Callus played around Cone of Cold, and I'm very proud yeah. of him for that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Now, Callus is trying to decide whether to uh, play his BGH as a, as a naked 4-2 creature. And it's all about whether he thinks he's going to end the game before Alexstrasza comes out. And by this play, he's pretty much telling us that, no, he needs to win or lose before Alexstrasza. Yep. 
How will this pan out? No one knows. <laughs> yeah, we can kind of see like one of the problems with uh, drawing two wild growth at the start right now. Callus has a lot of mana right now, but he doesn't have a lot of minions. The shade yep. is nice, but that means he doesn't. He's not getting a full value out of all his mana right now. He can play. He can play sh shade. Um, Wrath. He might even choose the science, the acolyte, but I would probably advise against that because you kind of really want to save your uh, keepers for the doomsayers yep, uh, in this course. particular matchup. And you don't want to play the shade just because of the flame strike on turn seven. You have a great board presence with two, uh, well, three minions, but two are like proper cards, so you're okay mm -hmm. with with that board state. But now. Oh, he did play the Shadow Next Rise. Interesting. Well, not only are you uh, vulnerable to uh, Flame Strike, you're vulnerable to Blizzard. Yeah, and that's the shade the place play. here. I believe that's actually the play, and it allows you to follow up with a, a more high value Flame Strike. And yeah. now, what we saw from um, Callus, he even though he got Wild Growth, Doctor Boom, and Innervate, Dog is in a pretty good position with a lot more cards, and a, and a lot of answers in his hand as well. That's very true. Like the second innervate and the second wild groves are dead cards right now. He would have been so happy with just Yetis or whatever. Shall I strike? Just not those two cards. Oh, I believe Do or Callus is about to charge the the Drew of the Claw. Yeah, he is charging. So he's making the read that his opponent would rather use Flame Strike last turn if he had it, but unfortunately, Flame Strike gets played this turn, and Callus literally has nothing that he can play next turn. Drawing oh, a Yeti is okay? It will be dead to Fireball next turn. And Dog is at the, at the point of the game when he has to play the Ice, Book or Ice Barrier just to play around the combo next turn. Oh, wait, it was turn no, 9. I don't... Never mind, never mind. But he has to play I don't even think anyway. You, need to, uh... you don't even need to Fireball the, uh, the Yeti. It's just like not too much of a threat right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Dog decides to use the Doomsayer instead. So now, after a flame strike and Blizzard, do you play both Keeper and Sylvanas? You can mm. silence the Doomsayer, go for four damage to activate the Ice Barrier, then you play the Sylvanas, which is not obviously um, a great minion against a minionless deck, well, almost minionless deck. But there's also a cool, really cool play if. Uh, you killed opponent Sylvanas when you play a Doomsayer board. The Doomsayer will be triggered instantly at the start of the turn of the Druid player. But <laughs> this will be not the case. And also the uh, Silence Doomsayer is kind of working against the odds to actually do this. But this will be so sweet if actually someone pulls this off. Okay, Dog is uh, left with this position where his opponent has minions once again. Oh, he's Gonna just gonna clear it uh, with just normal spells, fireball, frostbolt. His reasoning is that his opponent is running out of cards, so unless he draws an ancient of war, um, I'm gonna have more board clears. I'm just gonna have more single target board clears than my opponent has minions. So usually yeah. this isn't very effective, but in this particular case, it's not a bad plan. No time for games. And also, if the Sylvanas gets killed, the Doomsayer is still a good good catch because it's a target for your server draw. Oh, that's very true, actually. So now he's to the play Antonidas into Arkham Intellect, uh -huh. and which is very risky. Yeah, risky indeed. Um, the Sylvanas can can potentially uh, grab this Antonidas, and if it does, to be honest, I'm not sure. Even if the Sylvanas steals the Antonidas, how effective it will be. Because the uh, druid sure, is lacking right. in, in cards right now, and it's only the savage drawer that um, that exists, and, and he can't even guarantee that Sylvanas steals it. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to just use a savage drawer to get a fireball. Like, I mean, you kind of do, but it's not optimal, I'd say. What do you do this turn? This this is a really tricky turn. You can you can try getting the. Uh. Antonidas, but what do you do if you don't hit Antonidas? I think and he lose. hit him hard. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. So now 
Dunk will play Alexstrasza. See, w one option that turn was actually to um, to Savage Roar, but that would have meant that the Sylvanas probably the, the Sylvanas would have had seven attack and it would have killed the uh, Antonidas. So yeah. there's no way for you to actually guarantee the Antonidas steal. Well, he would have to use a big game hunter also, like Savage Roar, Russell Venus, kill the Doomsayer, and Big Game Hunter, Russell Venus to steal, steal the Archimedes of Anonymous, but he didn't have the Big Game Hunter. Kalos draws a high impact card in uh, Ragnaros, but it's not going to be high impact enough. I think it's too late. I think it's too late. Wow, Explosive Sheep in Freeze Mage, that's like a new addition that Dog has added. Mm hmm. That's true. 12 points of HP for the Druid, but there's no... Oh wow, Angel of Lore, and there's no burst left in Dog's hand. You know, Dog, uh, Dog has a lot of cards in his deck that typically aren't in Freeze Mage. Um, Antonidas is, is kind of in like 50% of Freeze Mage decks. Um, and, but we've seen him use... Oh, there's the Pyroblast. I was Pyroblast. gonna say, like, does he run Pyroblast or not? But apparently he does. Okay, so do you Pyroblast face here? You have the Ice Block up. You deal two damage with your Mad Scientist. No, he doesn't. does not. So he plays first Nova and plays the Sheep, I believe. Mm, he didn't opt oh, to play okay. anything. Loaded means skip a turn for your opponent. But he doesn't do that. He will play the Ragnaros, which will mean he can trigger the Ice Block this turn, which is crucial for him. If he hits face, of course. Yeah, there's still a chance for the uh, the Druid to win right now, even though it looks yeah. so bad before. Druid just kept top decking good cards, high value cards that uh, Druid has, you know, Druid things. Pyroblast is the only answer to Ragnaros. Like, most of the time, um, Freeze Mage is losing to Ragnaros because he has no answer to it. He has to use, like, two, um, two uh, burst cards, or he has to use Polymorph for that, and he doesn't really have it. Yeah. So... Dog just, dog, dog just Pyroblast face? Yeah, and he does so because... Base, he, he just wants to top deck a Fireball, and that's it. And well, he dog... actually used both fireballs and minions, I believe. Oh yeah, right. You're right. So and now I know he used he used at least once one uh, frost bolt. Yeah. So I'm not actually sure what he can draw. He can ice block this turn, but besides that, he needs to look for more damage. He basically only has one more turn to survive, and if he doesn't top deck enough damage to kill his opponent, oh, he sees he has two cards remaining. He definitely, I think he has one ice lance left, and he might have another frost bolt. But so if he draws gonna... a Frostbolt, that's not enough, but he can... No, no, a Frostbolt would be enough with the second, with the Ice Lance he has in his hand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's five. Sorry, uh, my, uh, my stream is not so clear. That's five point three. But, but if he just has an Ice Lance plus another card, it may come down to a 50-50 with just two cards left yeah. in Dog's hand. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Or, so it or, he, can, down or he can ping, ping, he can ping the Acolyte of Pain. Yeah. Can ping out kind of pins. It comes down to the, to the cards that has Doc has in his deck. Second, second ice Yes, yeah, so a few on the pink pink for, for the frostbolt. Is the last be... card frostbolt? I think so. No, it's kind of cold. Dog, dog didn't do a good job keeping track of the cards he has in uh yeah I in, think in, so in his deck. Wow. And I think. I think that's a loss. Yeah, I think you're right. That's that's a loss. Wow, we both thought that the Frostbolt is the last card of the deck, but actually we're wrong. 